in the ancient world. A war broke out between the Greek city-states of Thebes and Sparta in 378 BC and the Thebans, led by Epaminondas. Back then, Greek city-states, except for Sparta, staffed their phalanxes with citizen soldiers, civilians who temporarily took up arms during wartime. By contrast, Sparta's citizens were professional soldiers who began training at age seven in a brutal military academy and spent the rest of their lives readying for war. Sparta could afford that because of massive slavery. It conquered its Messenian neighbors in the 8th century BC, then turned the entire Messenian population into state slaves, known as helots. To control the helots, who outnumbered the Spartans 10 to 1, Sparta became a militarized state and society. It also became a police state, with secret police known as the Cryptia, to terrorize the helots and kill any who seemed restive or showed leadership potential. Sparta's military structure produced an elite phalanx that was unmatched in discipline and toughness. By the 4th century BC, Sparta was Greece's leading power, and the Spartan phalanx was one that nobody wanted a piece of. That is, until Epaminondas showed up and broke the spell of Spartan invincibility by breaking the Spartans at the Battle of Leuctra in 371 BC. There, Epaminondas led a Theban army of 7,000 hoplites, plus 600 cavalry, against a bigger Spartan army of 10,000 hoplites, plus 1,000 cavalry. The Theban elite was a unit of 300 warriors known as the Sacred Band, comprised of 150 pairs of homosexual lovers. The Spartan elite was a unit of 1,000 full Spartan citizens, trained for war since childhood. Greeks usually placed their best troops at the right side of their line. Thus, it was rare for the best troops of both armies to come into contact with each other. Epaminondas changed that by putting his best troops on the left side of his line, directly opposite the Spartans. Then he demonstrated his prowess as a creative warrior with two innovations that revolutionized warfare. Epaminondas' first revolutionary innovation was to depart from the norm of lines of a uniform depth, usually 8 to 12 men deep. Instead, he stacked the left side of his line 50 deep by thinning the rest of his line. That is, he concentrated force at the decisive point. Second, instead of advancing in line abreast, Epaminondas echeloned his army so that his powerful left was the first to reach the enemy and his right was the last. The Spartan right, stacked 12 deep, shattered upon impact with Epaminondas 50 deep left. The Spartans lost 1,000 men, including 400 elite citizens, plus the Spartan king Cleombrotus I. The myth of Spartan invincibility never recovered. Epaminondas then invaded Sparta and freed the helots, who formed an independent state. Since its society and economy depended on slave labor, Sparta was forever after reduced to minor player status. Epaminondas died in 362 BC, killed while dealing Sparta another crushing defeat. His innovations formed the bedrock of King Philip II of Macedon's military principles and those of his son, Alexander the Great.